Welcome back everyone, it is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group and today is the second episode of the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Cryptocurrency, How to Set Up a Wallet. So if you missed our first video, make sure to go back and watch that first where we talk about a brief description of what cryptocurrency is, how it works and why it was created. Now that you know a little bit about cryptocurrency, you need to set up a wallet, which is the place that you will store all of your cryptocurrency. So let's get right into it. We're right here on our website, idahocryptogroup.com. I'll also leave a link in the description, but if you go over here to the Crypto Tool tab where it says wallets you can click that and it's going to open up a page where we have listed a few of our trusted wallets ones that we have used before now there are basically three places that you can store your coins you can store them on an exchange in a hot wallet or in a cold storage wallet now something like coinbase or kraken or gemini or binance those are examples of exchanges while you can deposit cryptocurrency into them it's not recommended to store cryptocurrency long term on exchanges because they're online they also have access to your private keys which is something we'll talk about here shortly and they're susceptible to security breaches and hacking attacks right it's happened before although most exchanges like coinbase binance kraken they're all insured and they have insurance funds where you'll most likely get your coins back if a security breach did happen, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And that's why we recommend storing cryptocurrency long term on either a hot wallet or a cold storage wallet. Now, a hot wallet, for example, like Exodus or Coinami or Abra, you can download on your computer or on your mobile device and you can access your wallet anytime you're connected to the Internet. Now, a cold storage wallet, for example, is different that you actually have to have this physical device here to access your funds. So this is a Ledger Nano. This is a Tracer, two different brands that act very similar to each other. If I click on the Ledger Nano link, for example, it's going to take you to their website where you can order one of these guys. Some people like cold storage wallets because it does add an extra level of security in the fact that you actually have to have this physical device in your possession to access your funds. So we'll make a video in the future on how to set up one of these guys. But in today's video, we're just going to be setting up a hot wallet Exodus to be specific. So you're going to go ahead and click on Exodus or you can go to their website Exodus.com here and you're going to hit download. Now you can download this for Windows, for Mac, Linux, or also on the Google Play or App Store over here. So today I'm on a desktop window, so I'm gonna hit download. So once that download is complete, you're gonna go ahead and launch the installer, and then it's gonna go through the quick installation process, and then it's gonna let you know, okay, Exodus has been installed, so then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open the app up. And then once you get into the wallet, it's gonna look a little bit something like this. Again, if you're on the mobile app, it might look a little bit different, but I am here on the desktop version. So right when you get into the wallet, you basically have two options. You can go ahead and make your first deposit and start depositing cryptocurrency into your wallet, or you can restore an old wallet from a backup. But if this is your first time opening up an Exodus wallet, you don't need to worry about the restore step. So what you need to do before you deposit any cryptocurrency into this wallet is you need to back this wallet up. And this is the most important step. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the settings tab and then it's gonna give you a few options up here and you're gonna hit back up. Now it's gonna have you quickly create a password. Now this is the password that you are gonna to have to use anytime you log in on your phone or your computer. So it's gonna have you type it in twice, make sure you didn't make any typos. And then right here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take you to your 12 word recovery phrase. Now this 12 word recovery phrase is super important. And right here it says your 12 word recovery phrase allows you to recover your wallet in case you ever lose access to it. Write down the words in correct order from one to 12 and store them somewhere safe. So these your last resort backup words where if you ever get a new device or you get your phone stolen or you lose your phone these 12 words are necessary to access your funds again so what you're gonna want to do they have them all hidden at first and you're gonna hover over each one individually and it's gonna show you the word and then you're gonna go through and write each one down one by one in order so I'm gonna do that real quick and I will be right back so once you have your 12 words written down in the proper order, you're gonna go ahead and hit next. And then it's gonna do a quick little check to make sure that you wrote down your words correctly. So this is the last step, which word from the list below belongs to your paper backup. So in my case, the word vacuum was in my list of 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and hit finish. And then boom, you're all set. So at any time you can go back in as long as you're logged in and you can view your recovery phrase. But again, make sure you wrote that down. You're gonna keep it somewhere safe where it's not gonna catch on fire, get stolen, get wet. Very important to keep that safe. And at any time you can also change your login password, which are two separate things. Every time you open up your app, you're gonna to have to type in your login password. But anytime you get a new device or you need to get that wallet onto a different device, that's when you're gonna use your 12 word phrase. So now that you got your wallet backed up, you're ready to start using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to home here 
here. So that takes us back home to our portfolio page here, where you can see a list of all these different coins. Again, Bitcoin was only the first cryptocurrency created. There are hundreds, thousands of other coins out there. Now keep in mind that not all wallets have the ability to store all coins. So Exodus stores quite a bit of coins, but there are some coins that you're not going to be able to store on here. So if you're looking to get some different coins that aren't able to be stored on Exodus, you're going to have to do some research to find a wallet that does store the coin that you're after. Um, but again, you can see some price information here, some 24 hour change, market cap volume, as well as a small little line chart. Now, if you go over to the wallet page, this is where you will control all of your sends and receives for cryptocurrency. So with wallets and with cryptocurrency, there are private keys and there are public keys. So private keys are the keys that actually give you access and permission to controlling and moving the funds. So the private keys you do not want to give to anyone that gives you access to your wallet. So if I go to Bitcoin here and I hit these three little dots, there's a view private keys button here that I can click. And then it gives you a little warning. Are you sure you want to show your private keys? Because if you ever pull these keys up, you're going to want to make sure that no one else is around. So if you hit yes, I'm sure it's then going to have you type in your password. If you hit unlock now, it is going to show you your actual private keys here for Bitcoin. These private keys are specific to the coin and to the wallet, and you do not want to share these with anyone. With these private keys, you can get access to the funds. So that's what a private key is. And then there are public keys. So if I wanted to receive Bitcoin, say I was buying it from someone or someone was sending it to me or I'm buying some from a Bitcoin ATM, I'm going to hit receive. Now, when I hit receive, it's going to pull up your Bitcoin address. Now, this is your Bitcoin public key. This one you can share with anyone because the only thing someone can do with a public key is send cryptocurrency to it. So if you were buying Bitcoin from someone or someone was sending it to you, you would want to hit copy here by clicking this little button. And then you're going to want to paste that into an email or into a text message or whatever and, and, and send that to the person that's going to be sending you Bitcoin. Now, this is also a QR code that they can scan depending on which app they're on that also corresponds directly with this public key. So again, private keys give you access to your wallet. You do not want to share your private keys with anyone, but this is a public key and you can give that to anyone you want. The only thing people can do with this public key is send cryptocurrency to it. Now, one thing you need to understand about these public addresses is they are blockchain specific. And what I mean by that is Bitcoin was the first crypto that was invented and it runs on something called the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, as other coins were invented and people figured out more efficient technologies, they created other blockchains. So, for example, if I go over here and click on Ethereum and hit receive, you're going to notice that it is a different address. So you can't send Bitcoin to an Ethereum address and you can't send Ethereum to a Bitcoin address. So when you're sending and receiving cryptocurrency, you definitely definitely want to make sure that you have the right address or you could risk potentially losing those funds completely. But not all coins will have different addresses. So if you notice here, this is my Ethereum address. But if I go to Chainlink and hit receive, it is actually the same address. And the reason for that is because Chainlink runs on the Ethereum blockchain. So some coins will run on each other's blockchains, but you just want to make sure that when you are sending or receiving cryptocurrency, that you just make sure to find the right corresponding address, right? So again, if you're buying Chainlink, you're going to want to make sure to use your Chainlink address. But if you're buying Bitcoin, you're going to want to make sure to go over to Bitcoin and and use your Bitcoin address. That's what a public key or a public address is. Now, the same sort of rules apply for sending cryptocurrency. So if I wanted to send Bitcoin to someone, instead of hitting receive, I'm going to hit send. And then it's going to ask me for a little bit of information. The first piece being the Bitcoin address that I want to send cryptocurrency to. So if I was sending cryptocurrency to you, whoever's watching this video, I would ask you for your public Bitcoin address, right? Then you would either text it to me, email it to me, snap chat it, telegram it, whatever you're using. And then I would paste your Bitcoin public address in this bar here. Or you can use the QR scanner if you have a webcam or you're on your mobile device to scan your recipients receive QR code. So again, whoever you're sending it to, you put their Bitcoin public address here and then you type in the amount you want to send and then you hit send. Same thing goes for another type of coin. If I wanted to send Dash to you, I would go send and then I would ask you for your Dash public address. And then on your end, you would hit receive and you would copy that address to me, right? So public address is super easy. The rest of the wallet's pretty self-explanatory. So if I wanted to receive Bitcoin Cash, you just hit receive. Uh, again, you can go back to your portfolio page and see all the different coin prices here. One cool thing about Exodus is they actually have a built-in decentralized exchange here. So if you click this tab on mobile, it's going to be on the bottom middle. You can actually go in here and exchange coins back and forth for each other. If you wanted to trade some Bitcoin, for example, for some Ethereum, you would go and 
choose both of those and then type in the amount of Bitcoin you want to send. And then it's going to tell you, obviously, I don't have any coins right here to start the exchange, but pretty cool that they have a little built in decentralized exchange. Super simple, showing you how to set up an Exodus hot wallet today. Now that you know a little bit about what cryptocurrency is, now you need a place to store it and that's going to be in a wallet. So that wraps up the second episode of the ultimate beginner's guide to cryptocurrency. Now you know a little bit about what cryptocurrency is and now you have a place to store it. So if you like the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe comment. If you have any questions down below and make sure to stay tuned for the next episode, which is going to be teaching you how to buy cryptocurrency. So thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time.